Paper X is a team that has consistently made deep runs in many major tournaments, but has never been able to win a championship at an international event. They first gained a lot of attention in 2022, when they made the Grand Finals of Masters Copenhagen, but lost the final in a close series to FPX. Then, during Masters Tokyo in 2023, they placed third after a close series with EG, even though they had to use a substitute for their star player. During Champions in 2023, Paper X finally had their full roster and were undefeated the entire tournament until the Grand Final, where they fell short of the title and went home with another second place finish. More recently, Paper X competed in the Afrika TV offseason event, and they made it to the Grand Finals against Sentinels, but fell short again for another second place finish. Although they were just experimenting this event, it still makes you wonder what it is about Paper X that always causes them to fall short of a major championship. In this video, we're going to find out what Paper X is really missing for them to be able to win a major event. We're going to do that by revisiting their major losses since 2022, so we can investigate what it is about their gameplay that holds them back. We're also going to look at unique data insights and statistics from their tournament performances to see what it can tell us about Paper X's flaws. Finally, we'll combine everything we discovered and talk about major areas of improvement that Paper X might want to focus on next season if they want to push for a championship. We're going to get to the bottom of this Paper X curse once and for all. But first, let me tell you about the sponsor of this video, Immortal Roadmap. If your rank is below Radiant, you play at least 2-3 comp games a day, and you've been struggling to rank up, Immortal Roadmap has an amazing offer for you. The Immortal Roadmap program will teach and help you implement everything you need to hit Immortal Plus in 8 weeks. They're so confident in their coaching that they are the only live, premium coaching program that offers a 5 division rank up in 8 weeks guarantee or your money back. They've helped hundreds of students hit Immortal and Radiant, and their coaching staff consists of Compeki and over a dozen Radiant coaches with VCT experience, such as Comet, who was an analyst on Ascend the year they won champs in 2021, Screwface, who was the sixth man on EG when they won champs in 2023, and Gangsta, who's played on Disguised, Immortals, and Knights. If that offer sounds good to you, the first 50 people that sign up with them will receive additional VOD reviews. Thanks to Immortal Roadmap for sponsoring this video. Okay, let's get back to the video. When we all think about Paper X, only one word comes to mind. Aggressive. Paper X initially stood out because they took aggressive plays to a whole new level. They have consistently shown over the last two years that you are never safe, even if you're in your own spawn. As soon as those barriers drop, Paper X are going to run you down, and most teams can't do anything about it. It's a race to see how fast they can end the round, and enemy teams are just a speedrun target. This is a graph showing the average round time of all the teams that competed at Champions last season. Teams like Navi, Liquid, and Loud like to take their time with rounds, while teams like DRX, NRG, and EG are neither fast nor slow. Even though we all expect Paper X to have shorter rounds, I was still really surprised to find that they have the fastest average round time by far out of all the best teams in the world. A quick thanks to Augment.gg for making all these data segments possible. You can check them out in the description below. So let's really dive deep into Paper X's fast and aggressive style and how it translates into their strengths, but also their weaknesses. I want to center this part of our investigation around how Paper X plays bind, and especially on defense, since being aggressive on defense is an optional choice. Bind is a unique map because there is an additional metagame due to the nature of the teleporters. Teams have a lot of options as they can play the map in a conventional way by ignoring the TPs completely, or center their entire strategy around controlling the TPs for cross-map rotations. Since there are so many different options, Bind gives us a great idea on the variety of strategies that a team has, and will help us break down Paper X's aggressive playstyle. Bind is also interesting because it's one of the maps where we first saw Paper X successfully implement off-meta picks like Yoru and Reyna which heavily supports their aggressive playstyle. During Masters in 2022, Paper X pulled out Yoru and showed the world how oppressive their aggressive playstyle could be, even against the best teams in the world. The game has matured in terms of strategy and tactics since then, but in 2023, Paper X showed that they can still make an agent like Reyna work with their aggressive playstyle. Against TRX, they can be seen pushing somewhere new on bind at the start of every single round on defense. In this sequence of rounds, they start by pushing up B-Long with the Reyna Sky combo, Next round, they swap Reyna to A and push down short for first blood. Then, they move Reyna to Hookah in the next round to look for a three-man trap. And finally, they go back to pushing down B long. This cycle of aggression kept DRX on the back foot and successfully opened up many opportunities for Paper X to close out rounds. At Masters in 2023, they couldn't even play their double duelist comp because they had to use a sub, and they were still running four-man aggressive pushes. Just to illustrate how often Paper X uses strategies involving instant aggression, 
Here are some graphics on their defensive positions. This first heat map shows Paper X's defensive positions in the first 15 seconds of the round compared to EG's during their winner's bracket final at Champions. We can clearly see way more instant aggression out of Paper X than EG. This next heat map shows Paper X's defensive positions compared to NRG's during their match at Masters Tokyo. And again, we can see Paper X working deeper into the map on defense 15 seconds into the round, meaning they're the ones running aggressive strats as soon as the barriers drop. Here's one more graphic against Fnatic at Masters, but this time showing traces of their player positions to really outline how far Paper X are pushed up. Paper X ran plays to instantly push all four parts of the map whereas Fnatic only made a couple attempts into Showers and Short B. Now, Paper X seems a little bit one-dimensional here, as we've shown just how much they run instant aggression, but how do they always make it work? Well, the harsh reality is that they don't. Teams deeper into tournaments have time to study Paper X and prepare for their pushes. Against Fnatic, for example, Paper X four-man push Short A. Fnatic have studied Paper X and are patient to wait for the aggression. This brimstone smoke signals that aggression is happening, so Fnatic immediately react and take advantage of the weak side towards B. They rush the solo player on site and get a free bomb plant down. This is a big caveat to the aggressive plays that Paper X runs at the start of rounds. When teams are prepared, Paper X can often be punished for their 3-man or 4-man pushes. In fact, one of Paper X's worst defeats of all time was against FPX on Bind during their Masters 2022 Grand Final loss. Keep in mind that Bind was Paper X's first map pick of the series, which started out with this round where Paper X pushed down B short into market. They are immediately punished for their pushes when FPX barely had to do anything except wait to win the round. This trend continued on for the entire half, where FPX would wait for Paper X to make a move, often get a 1 for 1 trade at minimum, and then immediately respond by punishing the obvious weakness in the map, because Paper X would be so out of position as a result of their play. Paper X's aggressive style was completely exposed on defense, where they only won a single round. Now we can see that Paper X have an over-reliance and unhealthy dependence on instant aggression, which backfires on them when teams are prepared. This shows clearly in the stats I'm about to show you as well. This graph shows Paper X's round win rates depending on what time the first blood occurs in a round. And this is both when Paper X gets first blood or gives up first blood. Paper X experiences a steep drop-off in win rate when first bloods happen earlier in the round compared to later in the round. This means they rely on rounds being shorter and faster overall to win games. When we compare this to a more balanced team like Loud, we can see that Paper X's drop-off is much more steep. If first engagements happen later into a round, it just means that Paper X are much more likely to lose that round than other teams. Furthermore, Paper X wins 73.3% of defensive rounds where they get first blood. This is an incredibly high proportion of first bloods where they're converting into wins, as this was the highest out of all the top 4 teams in the world last year. On defense, playing slow just seems like a bad option for Paper X, but playing fast and aggressive is also exactly what causes Paper X to lose rounds against teams that are prepared deeper into tournaments. So what can Paper X do about this? To avoid teams studying their strats and reading them, they actually did try to run some different comps. For example, Paper X were playing this Brimstone Harbor comp for most of the year, but to try and surprise EG at the Grand Final, they pulled out this comp, putting something on Breach and Forsaken on Yoru. This comp was the one they ran when they first debuted Yoru in 2022. So they expected EG not to look that far back, but it simply didn't work and they suffered a similar defeat against EG like they did back then against FPX. So you might ask, why doesn't Paper X just tone down their aggression? This is definitely somewhat possible on attack as we'll talk about later, but on defense, playing aggressively is absolutely required for Paper X's comps to be effective. Paper X just don't have the same tools to stall out pushes without agents like Killjoy or Viper, so they are simply forced to play more aggressively to look for opportunities and gather info. Here's an example of what happens when they play too passively on defense with their aggressive comps. Paper X are defending this round, and aside from a little bit of showers control, they hold the line instead of opting for any instant pushes. EG are controlling a lot of information with their utility, while Paper X are mainly waiting for them to hit sites, even though they have the double initiator, double duelist comp. 
Paper X are planning to use Breach Ult this round, so they're all in more passive positions, but their lack of map control is what gives EG an opening. Forsaken attempts a 200 IQ play to take the map's teleporter, but then use his own place teleporter to teleport back to B. But with no controller info, EG walk up B long freely during that timing and catch Forsaken returning to long. Even if this didn't happen, a Yoru and Sky anchoring B with no real control of Hukou or long is still a disaster waiting to happen. One thing Paper X could do here is vary the timing of their aggression. They are very comfortable with plays that happen right as the barriers drop, but every team in the world is already waiting for that timing. If they can work on finding better mid-round timings, they can stay aggressive and build on top of the pressure they already give opponents from their instant pushes. I noticed them make attempts at this throughout the AVL tournament, but it's still harder for Paper X to find mid-round timings because their comps still lack important tools to control and gather information. A lot of trap plays are set up using the info gained from Cypher cams and Killjoy turrets, but Paper X do not have that luxury. Another thing to note is how teams are just more mechanically on par with Paper X deeper into tournaments. When Paper X force fights against teams and players who are worse than them, they still win fights when they are disadvantaged and get away with riskier plays. Watch how Paper X plays this round against RRQ. Paper X just run straight up long B and then end up bullying them into their own spawn. RRQ is not even necessarily a bad team, but it just shows how mechanically strong Paper X are and why they can force the issue, especially against weaker teams. But when Paper X ran a similar play against EG during champs, EG actually had the firepower to challenge them and punish them for a one dimensional strategy. This is that same B rush Paper X used against RRQ, but this time EG successfully challenged Paper X on site and punished them for rushing from one choke. In one of my recent videos, I showed you guys this graph which gives the round differential for each player when they have an above average performance compared to when they have a below average one. This means that Jing, for example, is winning 5.56 more rounds for Paper X when he gets more than 16 kills compared to when he gets less. Paper X depends on Jing popping off to win games. So this graph further indicates that Paper X is somewhat dependent on mechanically diffing opponents to be successful. Since Paper X needs all their players to have good individual performances to win games. A team like EG, for example, likely depends a bit more on their strategy or calls to work out, since their individual performances hold less weight in whether or not they win rounds. Let me show some examples of the problems we identified on Bind on other maps as well, just to prove that it's not an issue on one map. Here's an example on Lotus against EG at champs. Paper X, again, don't have a sentinel to help them control the map on defense, so they're forced to continuously make aggressive plays. But this simply allows them to get easily out-rotated. EG show presence in A, then move to draw attention towards B. Paper X are preoccupied with clearing B when EG suddenly pivot towards C and catch Forsaken off guard in mound by himself. This opens up the round for a C execute, while most of Paper X are now out of position to help. Here's a more recent example of their aggressive pushes on Breeze during the AVL tournament. It put them out of position and Sentinels were able to capitalize by taking B instead. Just like we saw countless times before, it's Paper X who initiates the aggression, which ultimately puts them out of position, allowing their opponents to take the opposite side of the map. Their aggressive style works better on some maps than others, but this is exactly why they only struggle to close out the longer best of 5 series. Paper X always puts up a good fight winning a couple maps and having close battles on others, but their playstyle ultimately gets exposed by teams who are tactically sound and mechanically on par with them. Even if their playstyle is only punishable on 2 or 3 maps total, you need to be strong on every single map to actually win a grand final. But I honestly think that Paper X have already started implementing exactly what they need to be doing to finally win an international tournament. Picking up Monyet, they'll be able to comfortably play double controller on maps like Bind or Split. VCT also allows teams to swap in players between maps in a series, and some of Paper X's recent content hints that Jing would still be with the team to some degree in 2024. This means they can run a 6-man roster so that they can have more agent flexibility during longer series. If they can incorporate a Sentinel agent on maps like Lotus or Breeze, they'll have way more options to play defense and won't always be forced to make aggressive plays. Earlier in the video, I also mentioned that Paper X can benefit from toning back their instant aggression on attack. This is something that I notice a lot during Champions, where Paper X actually have good defaults and can play more methodical rounds on attack, but seem to call rushes a bit too often. For example, even though they lost badly to EG on Bind, they still played this well-executed default against them, where they first took control of B-side, 
then fake pressure into hookah with beach utility, and finally use that timing they created to take A. Paper X are constantly struggling with whether or not they should call fast, aggressive plays, which their team identity is based on. They don't need to drop their identity completely, they just need a little bit more flexibility to get them over the finish line. I think their recent loss at champs will awaken something in them and really change how they play in this next season. They'll definitely go through a period of rediscovery, but I think teams should be very scared of a new kind of Paper X by the end of 2024. If you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate if you gave a like and subscribe to the channel. Let me know what other topics you'd want me to cover in the comments below, and I'll definitely see if I can get to some of them. And as always, thanks for watching.